Yeah, why are 70% vaccinations so important here on Restaurants of Hawaii? Um, and we have Cheryl Matsuoka. She's, uh, she runs the Restaurants of Hawaii, the Restaurant Association. And Siobhan Garcia, she works with her together, you guys. And special guests, uh, Brooks Baer um, of the Department of Health and uh, Patrick Bullard, uh, a PR professional. Oh, wow. We're going to have a discussion about um, events and encouragements and ways to get up to 70% or more. Let's go for 100. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carol, why, why don't you start the show by introducing these guys proper? Um, and by, by giving us an idea of the scope of the conversation we want to have with them. Of course. Thank you again, Jay, for having Hawaii Restaurant Association on Restaurants of Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, of course, June 29th, 2021, tomorrow is the last day for our HighGotVaccinated.com campaign. And as you know, Jay, there's wonderful prizes and incentives for people, and we're encouraging everyone, as long as you've had one dose, to jump on and register for those trips. Jay, hotel rooms, there's gift certificates, $1,000, there's all kinds of prizes. But more importantly, be sure to take that second dose, of course. So today we have two guests. I would love to introduce Siobhan Garcia, Hawaii Restaurant Association's Executive Assistant. Siobhan, could you please introduce our two guests? Sure. Um, thanks for having me. I wanted to introduce Brooks Bear. He's the COVID-19 um, and Pandemic Response Administrative Assistant for the Hawaii Department of Health. We also have Patrick Bullard. He's the Managing Director of Heinrich and Bullard Marketing. Thank you, Siobhan. Now, the main reason we're here today, Jay, is to discuss to get our state back to normal lifestyle, we really need full population immunity against COVID as soon as possible. With Hawaii on track to reach our 60% vaccination rate soon, our next step would be, would be to get our state to 70%, which is what Governor Ige has stated. Once we achieve that 70% vaccination rate, all travel restrictions will be lifted and the safe travels program will end. So restrictions on indoor businesses, such as wearing masks in restaurants, will be dropped. And there are so many, right now there's so many vaccination sites available. It's in all the different communities. And so there really is no reason why someone can't get to a vaccination site. One of the most frequently asked questions, and we're gonna cover some of these later, Jay, is do I need medical insurance to get my vaccine, my, my uh, dosage? And the answer is no, you don't need a medical program, which is so important. Because a lot of people feel like if I, they don't have medical coverage, they don't want to go to the vaccination site. So the truth is you don't need medical coverage. You just need to show up. And I'd like to turn it over to Brooks, who's going to talk a little bit more about the Department of Health and what they're doing and the current stats. And then Patrick, who's going to talk about the prizes, Jay. And I hope you signed up because there's some airplane, air trips, there's restaurant gift cards, there's a lot of incentives for you to um, join the High Got Vaccinated campaign. Brooks? Yeah, but just a footnote on that, I, I'm already vaccinated, Patrick. Um, can I get a prize? Can I get $1,000 even I've been vaccinated? Well, absolutely. All you have to do is enter. You can go to the highgotvaccinated.com site and uh, put your name in there and you'd be eligible to win. Um, we go through a pretty significant verification process um, to ensure that everybody that's uh, entered um, actually is vaccinated. So um, we want to make sure that you check out the rules on the on the website. Make sure you comply with all the rules. You're not a you know a relative of me or somebody else executing the contest. And then uh, we actually utilize Acuity LLP. They're a independent accounting firm that helps us select the winners so that we're completely out of the loop on that. And they give us the, um, the, the means to select a winner, which their uh, name is matched to a number in a computer system. And then we contact the winner to award the prize. So you could be that guy, Jay, if you're entered. I'm gonna be rich, I'm telling you now. <laughs> I need to be rich. But let me, you know, do you ever say to people, you know, in addition to the thousand dollars and all the benefits we, the state provide you, um, this, this actually helps you stay alive. 
um, that you know, for, at this you, you get you get all this stuff, but also you get to stay alive. Also, you get your family to stay alive. Um, you know, which which one's more important? What's it worth? Do you ever tell them that? Because that should be the most persuasive thing of all. Jay, you're you're absolutely right, um, and thanks for bringing that up because. You know, the, the incentive that this high got vaccinated campaign and, and particularly the incentive component of the high got vaccinated campaign is something that didn't begin until we were more than six months into this vaccination effort or about six months into the effort. Uh, up until that point, we've really been relying on, on uh, people's will to protect themselves, protect their neighbors, their families, their coworkers, their loved ones, and actually beyond that, the entire state of Hawaii. And because this virus is a global virus, we're really protecting the whole world when we get vaccinated. So absolutely, that is the number one reason people really should get vaccinated. But look, we know there, there are reasons that there, there are a lot of reasons why people haven't been vaccinated. Um, Cheryl touched on one of them. Some people think they're going to get hit with a big bill. No, the vaccines are absolutely free. In fact, even if you don't have insurance, you can get yourself vaccinated. Um, th there are all these hurdles and, and, and questions that people have. And early on, we were able to vaccinate uh, you know, large amounts of people very quickly. But now that they've been vaccinated, people like you, Jay, who are eager to be vaccinated, um, we're, we're, we're working with other populations, people who, um, you know, have questions. They, 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 uh, they, you know, cost questions. And maybe they've been busy. Maybe they're waiting for full FDA approval instead of that emergency use authorization. Maybe they don't have transportation to a vaccination site or they have language problems. And these are all things that we're wrestling with here at the Department of Health to try to provide them with transportation if they've got transportation challenges or to put the vaccine in their neighborhood to make it uh, easily accessible or to bridge that that language gap that they may have um, by coming up with translations and brochures and videos in in multiple uh, languages. We've got uh, those kind of things available in up to 20 languages. So. It's, it has gotten more difficult to get people vaccinated and to get the good quality science and, and the credible information to people because there's so much malarkey floating around, you know, uh, in certain circles that, that sometimes we have to counterbalance that just with getting credible, good science out there. But that's not always going to be enough. There are yeah. multiple reasons why people haven't been vaccinated, and some of them just need that little extra push. And that's where Pat comes in with this incentive campaign with the High Got Vaccinated effort. You know, one one thing is implicit in what you said, and and what I've seen in the paper, the national papers, is that is that um, we are at a point where it's harder to get the next person to take a vaccination. It's like we're hitting hitting Trump's base or something. We're hitting the hardcore now, and so you have to work harder for each single person you want to vaccinate. You have to provide greater incentive, a greater you know, outreach for each single one. It's really extraordinary uh, that we're at this point. And, you know, he's not going to make national. He's not going to make his 70 percent by July 4th, I'm sorry to say. Um, and he's going to have to work harder getting it done. And it's going to be harder getting it done. So you guys are really uh, sort of in the same place. Although I would hope that we don't have that kind of hardcore base here that resists, you know, your efforts, um, you know, going forward. I, I, we should be more progressive here, more Akamai here. We should be, are we? Or is it a yeah. parallel to the mainland? No, we actually are. Um, we've, we've done several surveys and polls, and we found that in the neighborhood of 10% of our population has just decided they're not going to get vaccinated. And, and we may never be able to convince them to be vaccinated. So what we really want to do is focus on the people who have said, yeah, I'm receptive to it, or yes, I'm going to get vaccinated. I'm just going to do it on my schedule when the time is right, maybe when we answer their final questions. So for the Department of Health, the High Guide Vaccinated campaign has really been about outreach, education, and access. Outreach to communities, populations, geographic areas um, where... Uh, they, they really haven't had that uh, easy access to the vaccines, um, you know, bridging those language gaps, those kind of things, making sure that the vaccine is available just about around every single corner, which it is now. Hey, go to your local pharmacy. You can get a free shot today. Um, and so uh, we're ahead of the rest of the nation. But again, that little extra push could come from, from, from people who are looking for 
incentives. And, and, and that's out there right now on HighGotVaccinated.com. And, and there's actually some exciting news about the future of that campaign. Well, let's have it. That's right. Well, drum roll, please. Um, <laughs> well, just, uh, a, a couple of things that um, we will be announcing later today in a press conference that um, uh, Brooks and the Department of Health have monitored um, our campaign. And we actually have seen that the HighGotVaccinated.com campaign has worked to move the dial. Um, Brooks can elaborate, but um, it's working. Um, you know, some people have different buttons you got to push for, you know, for various reasons. Um, and some of us are just on Hawaiian time, no matter what's happening. So, um, you know, we uh, created the campaign with the intent to get as many people um, excited about getting vaccinated. And, and we've seen that it's worked. So um, uh, tomorrow, June 30th, at midnight, the stroke of midnight, we will turn into pumpkins and the first round of the highgotvaccinated.com site contest will be done. We'll uh, be putting a fork in it. And on Thursday, July 1st, we're gonna pick 83 winners. Uh, to win the balance of the prizes that we have left, which includes Marriott Bonvoy points, um, a, a Hawaiian Airlines, 100,000 miles. Uh, we've got Southwest, American, Alaska Airlines. We've got a car lease, um, some great restaurant prizes to give away. So um, we've kind of reached out to a lot of um, different businesses and businesses in turn reached out to us to say, what can I do to help? That's a and, great idea. Because it's yeah. in their interest. It's in their interest to see this happen. Absolutely. The the businesses, um, particularly uh, some of the travel industry businesses, the restaurant businesses that are greatly affected by the current numbers that we have to achieve, um, first to get us to 60%, and then to give us to 70%, we're all a part of that equation. So, you know, sitting on the fence and, you know, I, if people have health uh, issues and have concerns, God bless them, you know, we respect that. But for people, who absolutely could get vaccinated, let's go get it done. So um, we, we're we gonna award um, 83 prizes by July 14th. We'll announce all the winners for that, but we're not done. Today, we're gonna announce round two of the contest. The sequel, if you will, is gonna happen beginning on July 12th. And we're gonna reload the cache of prizes. Um, this time, the prizes are going to get even more fun for some people. We're going to push different buttons, and we've got cash. So uh, we're going to be making an announcement today. Um, I can't spill the beans just yet, but we will be announcing that we've got some fabulous cash prizes and more to come. And we are looking for more uh, business businesses and, in this case, restaurants that want to support us to support you. So you can get on board, go to the website, um, contact Cheryl, and just say, hey, how could I help? Um, we know that the more incentives we provide to people, the more people are going to participate and do what we want them to do. So yeah, uh, that's the reality. Um, yeah. So Cheryl, um, how, how involved is the Restaurant Association in this? What, what does it mean to the Restaurant Association from, a, you know, say, a business interest point of view? And how is the restaurant association participating? The restaurant is the restaurant association is participating 110%. I mean, we have been communicating this from prior to even the program launching, right, Brooks? And trying to get all the restaurants campaigning around this initiative because as we know, when we get to that 70%, the masks indoors will come off. We have more freedom to get back to the way it was. We get to resume our lives back again, Jay. And that means a lot to these restaurateurs. We're even hoping that we can lift the six foot distancing, which as you know, is still enforced right now. But the restaurants are all trying their best, communicating with their employees, encouraging. A lot of the employees are vaccinated. And you, like you said, you know, there may be a few that are holding out. And as you said, when you go to restaurants, they still are taking your temperatures and contact tracing. Restaurants are doing everything they can to protect all well, of them. Are they telling their employees they got to get vaccinated or can't work there? Um, they, that, that is something where, as you know, with the unemployment and it's hard now, right now we have, as you know, very, very, it's difficult to get employees and it's been the challenge. 
So I do know of a few restaurants that have really been every, every meeting with all of their workers, you know, they're sitting them down and saying, you know, please get vaccinated. This is just going to help you and your family, you and your loved ones. And, you know, we just need to get to that 70%. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the truth. If I saw like, uh, you know, Department of Health has ratings, a little green window, a sign in the window, and uh, that encourages me to go into a given restaurant. If I saw the restaurant um, had a sign in the window, said our, all our people are vaccinated, that would encourage me. I mean, let me put it another way. If I didn't see that sign, I would not be nearly as encouraged. But Brooks, let's talk about the magic of 70%. Uh, okay. What I get from what Patrick was saying is that if we reach as and when we really should reach 70% easily, um, then, then uh, the governor will um, uh, uh, re reduce the restrictions. Uh, yep. that's, that's fiat. That's not necessarily a, a health fact. That's a, a call it a, a governor fact. Um, so my question to you is, what exactly, from the point of view of, of the health of the state, does 70% mean? I guess I'm talking about um, herd immunity or some such concept like that. Sure. Uh, great question. And a lot of people are asking if 70% is attainable and what is herd immunity. And, and I think the important thing to know is that there is no magic number for herd immunity. Uh, the smartest scientists we have here at the Department of Health, and there are some brilliant people here, uh, they can't tell you exactly what herd immunity is because it's a moving target. We get these variants come in and they're more transmissible um, than the original COVID, the native COVID. And because they're more transmissible, that changes the equation. What exactly is herd immunity? What variants might, might arrive you know, tomorrow or next week? And so we've got to keep our eye on the variants. We've got to keep monitoring them. Uh, we've got to keep the transmission rates low, the, the new case counts low. And we do that by getting vaccinated is our very best tool. Um, and by wearing masks and distancing, the things that we've been so good at for a while. But there's no magic number for herd immunity. In fact, we don't determine what herd immunity is. The virus determines what herd immunity is. We're going to know we get there when we see those case counts just plummet and disappear. And look, they're down. Hawaii has done a tremendous job, better than almost any state in the nation, at getting vaccinated. And we've been terrific with the masks and, and respecting one another and showing aloha. We're approaching 60%. Today, we're at 57.8% of Hawaii's entire population that is fully vaccinated. And more than 62% of the state's population has initiated the vaccination process. So within the next couple of weeks, we expect that those uh, who have initiated the process will finish their vaccinations, and we're going to reach 60%. But boy, it's getting tough to, you know, to, to, to move quickly towards 70%. And it's going to take a couple months at least. Um, yeah. Uh, but but look, take advantage of the offers that Pat's given you. If you've been looking for a reason, you know, you've got until midnight, Wednesday, the 30th, to get yourself at least one shot is all you need. Then you're eligible to go to highgotvaccinated.com. Then you can register for those prizes. You might win a fa fabulous prize. And then you'll be automatically in the drawing um, that, that comes up in July and August. And you know what? You could be saving your own life or someone's life that you love. And that is way more important that's a, that's than That's a good price. reason. That's yeah. always actually the best reason to Absolutely. save your own life or your family's life. So let's talk about something you mentioned, and that is uh, you know, being mindful of, of Delta and other variants that could very easily pop up. I mean, we have states with, you know, uh, which, which are shamelessly low in terms of the vaccination level. Um, it's really it's frightening. It's scary how, how people you know, uh, in those states don't want to take a vaccination at all. And in those states, you have more cases. And when you have more cases, you have the greater possibility, uh, not necessarily limited to Delta variant, but any variant, a new variant, a brand new, even more infectious and lethal variant. Okay? And these people under the Commerce Clause, they can come to the state of Hawaii, which has done a good job with its own population so far, um, but which is a you know, tourist destination. And my question to you is, how, how do we prevent those people um, from getting here and spreading around Delta and other variants, which we may or may not um, be vaccinated against. Well, it, it's really difficult because here's, here's what can happen, even under the Safe Travels program, which, as you know, it, it is 
perhaps the best program in the nation, a very conservative program aimed at saving lives and protecting us in Hawaii. And it has worked tremendously well. That's one of the reasons that we have such uh, low death rates here in Hawaii is the approach that Governor Ige took uh, and putting a premium on our lives. And, and, and at the Department of Health, we really appreciate that. But you're right. Someone can, for example, let's say they're traveling to Hawaii on a Sunday. They take a COVID test on the mainland on Friday because they have to be tested negative within 72 hours of boarding their final flight to Hawaii. So they test Friday, they're negative. Well, then they go out to dinner Saturday with someone who's, who's uh, positive with COVID and they are infected with COVID and maybe with one of these variants. Uh, and then Sunday they board a plane armed with their negative COVID vaccine test result, they are perfectly, um, you know, they are perfectly within their right, uh, within the rules to come to Hawaii. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to them, they have just been infected. They come to Hawaii, they're here for a couple of days, and then they start experiencing symptoms. They go get tested. Lo and behold, they're positive. Who knows how many people they came in touch with before they knew they were positive and before they go into, uh, into isolation. Uh, and, and look, I don't want to just put this on the tourists. Um, we've seen a lot of cases of residents who have traveled and come back and they, you know, they run into this exact same situation. Yeah, same thing. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, but Jay, you said something that's really important that, um, you know, in, in, in places where the vaccination rate is really low, um, there is more opportunity for these mutations to develop because there can be no mutation without replication. So as the virus is replicated, there's more opportunity for a mutant to happen. These mutants. So what was that? There can there can be more replication. What was it now? Well, because there, say it again because I want to put it on the final exam. Yeah, I appreciate it. There, there really um, there can be no mutations without the virus replicating itself. In other go. words, right. if I don't pass it to you and you don't give it to Pat, the, the, the virus has not had a chance to to mutate or become a variant. And so this gets back to that global aspect of, of this virus. Um, you know, the latest, the Delta variant originated, uh, we believe, in India. Well, the vaccination rate there was very low and infection was running rampant. So, you know, and here we are in Hawaii, halfway across the world. What's, you know, what's in our, you know, what do we care what happens in India? Well, we, we should not only care and have compassion for the people of India, but to protect ourselves, we should hope that they can get vaccinated at a high rate too, because the mutation that develops there becomes a variant here. Yeah, sure. So my question to you then, I mean, I, you know, assume that we, we, that is the world, cannot control these variants. Um, let's assume just for this discussion. I mean, I hope they can, but maybe not. Um, isn't the solution then uh, to get everyone, I mean, everyone who doesn't have a medical reason um, uh, vaccinated right away. Uh, like, you know, if not 100%, then 99.9. If we do that, then, and I'm thinking of Hawaii for a moment, uh, then Hawaii is pretty much safe. It means that, um, you know, anyone coming or going for that matter uh, is going to be vaccinated and protected and not, and, and is not going to have the disease, at least if the, assuming the vaccination works against all the variants which is not entirely clear right now. But, and then you add to that the notion of a, of a, of a passport, a vaccination passport, and, and you've got it licked, right? Now, it, I don't know if that's in the plan, but it seemed to me that you know, if this gets worse, and it may, that's what we gotta do. We're on the way. And, and the contest, Patrick, you know, is useful to get up to a greater number of vaccinations. But if it gets to be you know, an ongoing concern, then the answer at the, at, you know, logically is to require people to have vaccinations, require them to carry proof of vaccination. Isn't that, you know, the ultimate solution? Jay, Jay, you talk about the variant coming here from some of those states that don't have high vaccination rates. It, it can absolutely happen. How can we protect ourselves? We can get vaccinated. I'm right. vaccinated. If I come in contact with someone who's got a variant or an, any brand of COVID, uh, I am certainly not as concerned uh, as if I had not been vaccinated. Uh, and you know what else? I've been vaccinated, so if I'm exposed to someone, I don't even have to go into 10-day mandatory quarantine. So there are tremendous advantages to being vaccinated. Uh, once the FDA grants full approval of the vaccines, uh, and both Pfizer and Moderna have asked for that full approval, and we expect the FDA will grant it at some point, 
then the discussion will begin on mandatory vaccinations. As you know, the University of Hawaii uh, and other institutions have already said that um, to attend classes on campus at the University of Hawaii, you will have to be vaccinated once the FDA gives full approval to the vaccines as opposed to just this emergency use authorization. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is something that may be coming down the pike. We're not there yet because we don't have that full approval yet. But for example, the military, you know, will they require, you know, full vaccination? It's an interesting question. It's coming. I think it will happen. I mean, if you're talking about national readiness, national security, you really can't afford to have any old holes in the boat. So, so um, Patrick, you know, how do we how do we achieve that ultimately, vis-a-vis -vis the people who are difficult to convince? Um, you know, the point, I, this is really a takeaway point that Brooks mentioned. If we are all vaccinated in the state of Hawaii, we really don't have to worry so much uh, about the about the, uh, the, the, you know, the, um, uh, the, the uh, replication, the, what do you call it, the, uh, the variants coming in from other states where they haven't taken care of their people. Uh, how, how do we achieve that on a voluntary basis? Or do you think we're going to have to address the hardcore people in ways beyond a contest? You know, an, an interesting thing, and Brooks can verify this, uh, but uh, some figures that I heard, which I believe are current, is that everybody that's currently in a hospital right now in the state of Hawaii and perhaps in other states are people that have not been vaccinated. So to me, that says it speaks volumes. You know, if you don't want to end up in the hospital or have a family member end up in the hospital, then you know, this is almost intervention time, you know, for, for folks who may be a little stubborn or, um, you know, have other reasons why they, they aren't getting out to get vaccinated, you know, for God's sake, you know, somebody rattle you and say, I love you and I want you to be well and I want you to stay with me and let's go get vaccinated. If that doesn't work, we're going to give you some cash. But in the meantime, we want everybody that can get vaccinated to go ahead and do it for the sake of our whole community. Well, what, it, what Brooks has said suggests another argument you could put on them. And that is this, you know, we, we have relatively good numbers. If you look at the national chart, state by state, we have good numbers um, and it is serendipitously wonderful uh, that we have this. Uh, it's a credit to the Department of Health, it's a credit to, you know, the aloha spirit and all that in Hawaii, where people um, think, think of the community and contributing to the community by you know following rules that benefit the community and so forth. But one other argument you could make in, in the face of you know the risk of having variants come in from other uh, less noble states um, is to say you know we we may not be able to hold on to our lead unless you do this. If you do this then we will continue in our low numbers. If you don't do this there's a risk that these variants will sneak in somehow. Uh, and put us all at risk. So you're 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 protecting the whole state. It's very clear uh, that you're protecting the whole state, and 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 we have something to protect. Now, what do you think, Brooks? Is that a worthy argument? Yes, and I think here's another one. Um, you know, kids will be going back to the classroom this fall, right? And we know that that those 11 and younger are not yet eligible to be vaccinated. So how do we best protect them? Well, we man up, we woman up, you know, we buck up, but we go get vaccinated. You know, that's going to protect them. How? Because it's going to keep the very, you know, it's going to it's going to increase and get us closer to herd immunity. So if I'm vaccinated, I can't transmit it to, to a child or anyone else. Uh, and then uh, while children don't get as sick uh, when they get COVID, they can certainly get sick and they can carry the, the virus without even knowing they have it because they're asymptomatic and they can infect a loved one who is older and more vulnerable. So it is a, it really incumbent upon all of us to be good neighbors, to show the aloha, and to get ourselves vaccinated. Uh, look, wh whether it's the fact that we're going to be opening up a, a pop-up pop clinic um, at a mall or a beach park or, or um, a community center near you or at a school near you, if that does it, great. If, if you get vaccinated because you want to cash in on, on miles, on travel, on a, a shopping spree with uh, the HighGotVaccinated.com campaign, that's great. Please know the vaccines are free. They're tremendously effective. They're very safe. More than two and a half billion shots have been administered worldwide. You know, some people said they're going to wait and see how they work. Huh, 
The proof is in. They are amazing. They are lifesavers. And frankly, I want to get on with life. I want to get back to seeing friends and getting together and go to a concert. And and I can't wait to get to some of Hawaii's terrific restaurants. You know, I've been doing a lot of takeout and uh, I want to sit down right next to somebody shoulder to shoulder without my mask, knowing that I'm safe. And the best way we can do that is to get vaccinated. Well, I, and I said at the inception of the show, I don't see a reason really why you guys with your programs and um, you know, your efforts at uh, reaching people uh, can't achieve very nearly 100%. And if we have 100%, and this is another argument to make to them, we are exceptional. We're the top dog in the whole state, maybe the world, if we can do that. And everyone will be you know, in awe. They will, they'll, be, they'll admire us for our efforts and our, the result of our efforts. And I hope you guys can find a way to reach every single man, woman, and, and child who is uh, you know, capable of being vaccinated and vaccinate that person. Uh, it will be a statement about Hawaii. It already is. Uh, Cheryl, we're almost out of time, so it's time for you to dig deep, maybe call on Siobhan a little bit, uh, and, and summarize this and uh, uh, connect it up. Well, I don't know, Siobhan, if you have anything to say before I wrap it up. Nope, I think it was all well said. (laughs) So again, Jay, thank you so much. The Hawaii Restaurant Association really appreciates this time. This is an important message, Jay. And we all want to get back to our normal lifestyle. And the Hawaii Restaurant Association, who is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industries, doing everything we can to support this important initiative. And like you said, it's only going to better the whole state. So thank you, Jay, for this time. And thank you, Brooks. Uh, It's it's a great case you make and a great thing you're doing. Good for the Department of Health. Um, And Patrick, thank you very much uh, for putting these programs together. And I'm sure they will work in the way that uh, these things work with human nature as we know it today. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and the other, the other thing I, I just want to say is that, um, you know, getting vaccinated, reaching what we can argue is herd immunity or better, um, will really assure the reopening of our, of our uh, business and our economy and our restaurants. Um, so uh, it, it's, it strikes me that uh, we could get our economy back on track if what you want to do is actually successful. Thank you so much. We'll be looking at the stats and I'll be, I'll be putting my application in for the, the $1,000 drawing, okay? <laughs> Do it today. <laughs> I'm sending him the link. Thank you, everybody. Aloha. <laughs>